Hey Power Appers, this is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video, we're going to show you how to simplify your app construction with the free Pragmatic Works UI Component Library. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Getting started with Power Apps can be a little tricky sometimes. We wanted to find a way to help improve the quality of the applications that you're building as you're starting in Power Apps, but also simplify the amount of work you have to do to stand up the original foundation of your application. In here comes the uh, Pragmatic Works UI components. You'll be able to download those components in the description of this video. And once you do that, this video is going to show you how to install it and how to use it, how to build better applications and more rapid applications with these components. So let's begin. Let's go back into, uh, I, I'm assuming you've already downloaded the components, one zip file, and that zip file is a solution file. To do that now, you go to the environment that you want to uh, install these in. So I'm in my mockup environment. I'll do import solution, browse out, and find that zip file that you just downloaded. Once you do that, it is going to, you'll hit next. Oh, let me go do it one more time here. There we go. Hit next. And then once you hit next, it will tell you whether the solution is going to install or not. Now, in my case, this solution's already on a, on a better version, so I picked an older version by accident there. Now, what happens after we do that? So we'll hit that little next button, it imports. It will take about four or five minutes to import this solution. Once we have that, we're ready to now build applications. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pretend like I am starting a fresh application and how I can use some of this for some of the common stuff that I might wanna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new application. I would normally do it through a solution, but I'll be a little lazy this time and create a new application. And I'll just call this temp, there we go, and hit create. Now we also provide a core solution for you as well, or a reference application, and we'll review that reference application a little bit later. But now everything is installed and ready to use. So once you have your first application open, the goal of this, uh, this component library is about seven components out of the box here that help you kind of get, get through this. And we're adding more all the time to this as well. So first step we want to do is go to the plus button on the left side and then click on Get More Components for this fresh application. I'll select all the components that I want to add. There we go. So just go ahead and, uh, perfect, grab all these guys right here. And then once you're ready, hit the Import button. Okay, this will take a few seconds to import these out. And then once you have that, you're gonna see Library Components on the left side. There we go and I can simply start dragging and dropping. Now, typically I'll do a little more UI enhancements before I start this journey, uh, like creating some variables, my colors, and those kind of things. But let's go ahead and start though. Let's pretend like I want to go ahead and bring over a header. There we go. So let's drag that header over here. Sorry, our, our tablet header in this case. And you can decide, hey, do I have a logo? Do I not have a logo? Uh, if you do have the logo, I'll put it right there. Uh, you also can say, I, I, I wanna use a side menu as well. So if I do the side menu, it's gonna hide the logo and put a, put a space for the hamburger menu right there. Later, we'll see a logo in that side menu also. Uh, do you wanna show the welcome address? See the welcome went away at that point? Uh, do you wanna show the user's picture? So you can get very granular on this and I'll call this, you know, Brian's tester app. And then my subhead, if, if, if you want a subhead, you just fill it in here. Uh, this app is used for testing. Okay. Then we can go through and actually specify my colors. I'll go with more like a dark blue for this example here. And then maybe a golder color like that. There we go. All right, so now we're starting to get there. So we have a core header now in place. Uh, I'll go ahead next and drop in our menu control. So again, you'll see that on the insert menu, menu, library components, and there is my side menu. Just by clicking on it, it will give me this little, little guy right here where I can then change his, um, his collapse color. Right now it's black. I'll change that to white instead to match my, my area right there. Now you'll see when you hold down the Alt key, you've got this little menu already ready to go and it allows for groupings and subgroupings. But how do I make this a little more robust? Well, let's go ahead and select this menu item. And one of the properties you'll see is gonna be menu items. If you click on it, this is a table that's driving that menu. What I typically do for this is I'll take this menu, 
I'll go to my app on start or the new areas you can go to later. So look up your app and then go to on start. So again, it's, it's app on start and then I'll type in clear collect, open my parenthesis and I'll call the col menu. This is my menu structure I'm going to use. Then do a comma and then paste in that code we saw from the other window, from the menu items menu. Here's all the stuff we have. Let me go ahead and create a few screens here so we can kind of practice this. I'll do screen two and uh, screen three. Okay, not great. And I'll actually just drop in a quick label so we can see each one of these uh, where we're at. So insert a new label and I'll just call this one, you know, so we can kind of see there's some kind of difference between the two screens. Now that we've got that, let's go back to our app and we'll have, we'll call this just, we'll call everything group one in this case. Uh, we have our home menu that is going to be SCR screen, that's right, screen one. There we go. Our next screen will be called screen two. And notice as you do this, each one of these has an icon you can choose and then also a group you can choose. So the icon is right here. It's the label. It's the label. Sorry, I'm not there. This is the icon right here. That's the label and that's the group we're going to put it into. So for example, if I don't want to use icon at home, I can do icon dot and you'll see there's an add document one, for example. So you can just type icon dot and it'll show you a list of them. You can also go up top and look at the icons by dropping in any icon and then searching for that. Uh, my next one will be, I'll call this one group two, just so we can kind of keep, keep this straight. And I'll call this screen two and I'll call this screen two, uh, one, and so on and so on. This one will be S uh, screen two, or screen three now, excuse me. And then at that point, I can go ahead and kill everything after that. There we go. All right, code looks good other than one extra curly brace. So I have three menu items, and of course you can make it contextual based on the security rights of somebody. So if they're an admin, you can do a collect and add one more item with an if then statement. So now that I've got that, I have COL menu. Let me go ahead and run the app on start right here just to make sure. And if you don't see this app on start, you might have to go to the settings menu up here and, and look for on start. You'll see it right here. Enable app on start property in case you don't have that. Okay. Now that we've got that, let's go back over to our, our, our uh, menu here and let's click on this menu. Let's get rid of our menu items, all this table stuff here and just type in COL menu. Okay. Once we do that, we can go and hop around screens now. We can see it directed me to the correct screen. And so on and so on and so on. All right. Now, we got the basics now done. Now, of course, we might want to throw like some kind of big image in here of some sort for our, our landing page. Just kind of stretch that across, something like that. Make that, a, make that a fill. And then we'll put another menu on the right here just as a, as a landing page. If to do that, again, under landing components, you'll see one option here, which is going to be um, our, well, there it is, menu button there. All right, it's a little bit large right now, a lot large right now. Let me go ahead and shrink it down, move it to the better side. You see it's acting in a responsive way. And then I can go ahead and again, same thing here, menu items, just select menu items. I'll make that COL menu also, and there's the same piece. And of course you can change the color to match the color that you see up top uh, to make it look you know, where it's all unified in this case. Okay, there we go. So same exact thing, screen one goes to that screen and so on and so on. Next, all we have to do is grab these two components and go to each of our screens and just paste those in. There we go, and there we go. The thing to keep in mind is you wanna make sure these two components, first of all, the side menu, and then the, the header menu is first in the order of the components. In other words, for example, if I were to drop in a form right now, there we go, and now I hit the, and I'll make this thing maybe a white background so it stands out a little bit more so we can see what, what's happening inside there. And I hit this little menu button, notice it kind of shows on top. So again, that's gonna happen. You just gotta make sure that you right click and move the component library, first of all, the side menu, so you just go reorder and move it front. Now it actually cleans that up. And then of course, the same thing for this guy right here. So you'll move it, uh, not front, but move it forward. So in this case, uh, there's your logo right here also. If you wanna put a logo, you'll see for that side menu, the logo actually has that and you can resize it here accordingly as well. So if you have some type of logo, add it here. 
There's your size dimensions of that logo. And again, you control all of this stuff. You can say, I don't really want to show a logo. So you can hide or show that also. All right, so now that we've got that, we now want to go ahead and try a few more components. So how about we try the component for, for tabs next? And we'll, we'll leave it at that. There's loads more you can find in here, things like doing spinners and all those kind of things as well. But for our tab component, we'll go that under library components. There you'll find uh, COM tabs. Go ahead and select that. It puts those up top. And exact same thing we had with the other option we can use for this. Right now it's saying we have, uh, what, eight or so menu items. You'll be able to hit the, um, as you select this, you'll see tab, tab fields, and here are all the tabs that we have. Okay, so if we were to skinny this down just a wee bit here, and we can make one something like, oh, we can make one like, uh, you know, I don't know, general info, and then one could be um, extended warranty, and so on and so on, and the attachments right here, maybe. This is a way you can basically, essentially, make it where you don't have to go through and put all this data on one form. So let's imagine, for example, this form for general info, I'm gonna color it a different color so we can kind of keep track of it. That'll be my red form. I'm gonna go ahead and drop one more form in here. That's gonna be my extended warranty one. So now I should have form one. And let me go ahead and clone this. I thought I got it. Let me try one more time here. Oh, it's not waking up there. There we go, let's try again. All right, for some reason it's not, let me just try again here. Let's do copy and go the old fashioned paste. There it goes, that worked that time. And I'm gonna move this again, reorder this all the way backwards. All right, cool. I'll make this form, this will be my extended warranty, make a form like this one green, just, for, just to kind of show you how we can do this. All right, so we only wanna show the green one on extended warranty and the red one on general info. That's our goal here. So what we have to do now is go to our visibility property and we'll say where it says true right there, we'll go ahead and say um, com tabs, which is the name of our component, com tabs. There it is, com tabs one. There it is. So dot selected tab. We can also base it on the title as well. I'll, I'll use the title for giggles here as well. And I'll say this equals uh, general info. So if that equals general info, it's going to go ahead and select it. Otherwise, it will, it'll, it will select the other one instead. So see, as I do this, it kind of shows and hides it. So you do the same thing for extended warranty. Again, select the extended warranty one for the form. Go to visible, select that, paste it in, and just change that to extended warranty. And something like this is all you have to do. So now as I flip around, we can see it goes from green to red. So this is our, ta our, our tab component. Now, just going back over here again to show the reference application, you'll find this inside of your solution as well. You can look at just some random areas. We have things like a little toggle area where you can kind of see it. Uh, you can control this little shadow box and how big it is. Okay. You can also, uh, you can, well, I toggled the wrong thing there, but you can toggle the, the shadow box and how large it is, whether it's inset or outset. Uh, there we go, grab it properly. Uh, so all those types of things are in here as well. We also have under the next screen, the tab demo. So you can kind of see where it's showing you what tab it's on right on the right side. And then lastly, there are other ones like, uh, if I go to my admin screen here, you'll see like our progress indicator at the bottom. You'll also see things uh, in the inspection one, for example, a loader for uh, true faults. For so, I mean, let me move that one forward again as well. But you'll see this is actually gonna, you can, you can have a variable that turns on the loader and a variable that turns off the loader for large data operations. Those are some of the components you'll find in here. We'll do some comp individual videos on those components and how to, how to, some, how to best, best practices. Which components do you wanna see? If you don't mind, let us know by putting in the chat window what kind of components would interest you for us to add to this library. This is our way of ultimately giving back a little bit, but also making it easier on our own selves as well. When we do these new engagements like hackathons, we don't wanna to have to build all this stuff and waste time on this stuff. So these component libraries allow you to basically create reusable code that you can use across all of your applications. If the component changes, every application can also optionally change. You can do this yourself and you can also extend our components and add more stuff to our components to make it better as well. Just a word of warning, if you do change our components in that solution, we're giving you fully unmanaged code, which allows you to do that, 
But if you do do that, we might overwrite you in a future release of the product as well. So just a little bit of a, a little word of warning when it comes to that also that you may want to extend our, our, extend our solution, not add your own stuff to our solution. But you can see in the code there how to do everything there as well. So again, you'll find the download link in the description of this video. And thank you so much for watching this and have a great day. Goodbye.